Some say that it was nothing but a harmless prank. Um, naughty neighbor being a chaotic claws type character. Others chalk it up to terror, perhaps a distraction for the police in order to target a more populated area. Others are coming forward and have talked about similar incidents in the past, leading some to believe it's a gang of criminals that are scoping out houses that they might easily burglarize. Or it could be a spectral creature of the night, benevolent, watchful, sending the gifts to remind those here that he is always monitoring them. One thing was for certain. Residents all across Henrico County, Virginia, woke up on Sunday morning to find a special delivery on their door. But it wasn't something ordered by Amazon Prime. Instead, this gift was a vintage television, the kind that most people throw away in this day and age. The police collected 52 of them all together and sent them in for analysis. No fingerprints were found. No foul play. For all intents and purposes, the televisions appeared harmless. But I know better. Because I kept one. Call it curiosity. Or crazy. But I felt that the arrival of this bizarre product was a herald or a portent of something greater. And it didn't take long for me to scour the internet and find that our little corner of the world was not alone when it came to the reports of strange deliveries. In St. Petersburg, Florida, an older woman complained about receiving a flat screen with no idea where it came from. And the bill that went along with it? $579. And a transaction made in her name that she never approved. In Midwest Kansas, a man reported finding several older model televisions scattered around his lawn and added that he kept them and plugged them in, only to find that all they showed were test signals. A similar report came from Montana. A young family said that they kept the TV and reported their children watched it for nearly six hours nonstop. A further review of these older sites told me that some in the creepypasta community called this thing by a name. Mr. TV. I dug further, and what I found only disturbed me more. Recipients of these vintage televisions, be warned, Mr. TV is not your friend, one dark web blog wrote. I first had an encounter with him in 2015. It was actually Christmas morning, so when I found the unmarked package, I first thought it might have been a gift from one of my old college buddies, but no. No one claimed it. My next assumption was that it was a secret Santa so I decided to use it in my man cave to watch football. When I turned it on, I found myself staring at a blank screen. Figured it must have just been an old model, but what happened next defied explanation. Text appeared on the screen. It knew my name. And then, there was this loud whirring sound. I felt like my ears were bleeding. I tried to turn it off, but nothing seemed to work. Then I saw a list of instructions telling me to spread the broadcast. It seemed like, like it took forever for the sound to die down, but when it did, I suddenly found myself in a trance-like state. You ever had an experience with sleep paralysis? My body was not my own. It felt like I was a puppet on a string. And it made me do the most bizarre things. I was, I was now the deliverer. I was driving to pawn shops, collecting old model televisions, and then, in the middle of the night, I was dropping them off. It made no sense. I, I know it seems harmless, but it felt felt evil, like it was meant to be preparing for some dark purpose. What that is, I can't tell you, but I can tell you this. If you do get one of these TVs, get rid of it, destroy it. Don't turn it on. If you do, the broadcast takes over. And I don't think any of us want to find out what that is. Now, that made me do a little research on the other users who reported strange things happening after receiving the TVs. That elderly woman experienced a heart attack approximately three weeks after the incident with the delivery. The man that kept all those TVs in Kansas disappeared three weeks after. His family still was holding out a reward for anyone that had any information. The family, their children, experienced severe seizures. This only confirmed my fear that these gifts were not benevolent. But it didn't stop me from trying it for myself. I lugged the heavy 34-inch screen to my living room and found some AC adapters to hook up my DVD player. See how this thing was really affecting people with my own eyes. I wish 
that I had listened to the warnings. The first thing I experienced was a sharp pulsing noise that rattled my skull. I thought by wearing protective equipment I'd be safe from the emitting noise, but it seemed like it only seemed to amplify it. The screen was pure darkness, showing an empty reflection of my own face staring back. Eventually, words appeared on the screen. Hello, Brendan. I didn't even remember what happened next. Hours passed. I, I had blacked out, and I was exhausted. One thing was clear, though. I had fulfilled the requirements of the creature because the television was now on, except my task was different. I was forced to watch it endlessly, just like a, just a blank screen of static noise. I couldn't even move or blink. I remember one night my eyes were bleeding after an eight-hour broadcast. I thought about destroying the TV at first, but nothing I used worked. Not fire, not a sledgehammer. The thing was impenetrable. I even dropped it from my roof. But all I seemed to be doing was causing the model to have a stronger hold on me. I, I, I was experiencing more blackouts. I was losing time at work. I was, I was finding it difficult to focus on even the simplest of tasks. Now that I've activated the signal, it seems that there's nothing I could do to break its hold on me. So I went back on the dark web, searching for some way to make this madness stop or to determine what purpose it served. There was only one report that discussed a ritual, a way to, to summon Mr. TV back to retrieve the old models. How to break the curse of the old televisions. Okay, listen up, folks, because this is going to sound crazier than anything I've ever written. You've heard of Slenderman, right? Well, I guess Mr. TV is his estranged, more technologically inclined cousin. I don't know. Either way, I found a way to make contact with the BC, but be warned, this is not the sort of encounter that leaves you unscarred. Only make contact with Mr. TV if you feel like you can handle the truth. And no, before you ask, I'm not going to write it down because it's too crazy to put into words. Uh, in all honesty, it's really something you got to see for yourself. First, you're going to need to find a serrated knife, like the kind you've always seen advertised on shopping networks. Yeah, that kind. So, you're going to need to make sure that this blade is sharp, because you're going to need it to cut open the back of the television while the broadcast is happening. And I know you guys aren't idiots, but I should probably put this out there so no one gets hurt. Please wear protective gloves, because this is the only way to send a signal to the creature, and it can be dangerous. You're going to need to cut deep into the flesh of this thing. And yes, I say flesh, because when you do this, you're going to hear a scream. Kind of like how when you hear a pig squeal or cut the throat of a deer. Except, expect it ten times worse. And there's going to be blood. I didn't even check to see how much, but I knew it was there. You'll then need to reach inside of the television and feel around for what I guess must be a control switch. It will feel like a car shifter. Pull it down. You'll hear this whirling noise and that'll be your cue to run around to the front to see a strange sigil flashing on screen. Memorize it. Carve it into your floor. Use your blood if you can stomach it. Mr. TV will arrive shortly afterwards and he'll give you the rest of the instructions you need to break the curse. Good luck. I set about getting the right tool immediately. It felt a little foolish, but I knew that all my other options were already played out. So there I was, sitting on the carpet of my duplex and waiting for the signal again. I knew I would have less than 10 seconds of freedom before the TV took control of me. My hands were clammy and I, I clung to the knife. And then... Then it happened. The screen came to life. I jumped up and I plunged the weapon into the TV. Everything happened just as the video described, except, except for maybe the screaming. It sounded more like a child to me whose, whose hand had been held and tortured against a stove. It made me cringe, but I didn't, I didn't stop twisting the blade. I needed to be free of this. I reached into the wiring and I felt around. The hairs on my arm were standing on edge as I found the device to make the switch. It took a little wiggling to get it to move, but when it was in place, I finished the ritual with little effort. When it was over, I probably looked like an idiot, sweating and bloody on the floor, sitting and waiting for God knows what to happen next. 
Well, I didn't have to wait long. My doorbell rang. I stood up and moved to check my surveillance cameras, confirming that it was none other than the mysterious delivery man himself. I cracked the door open slowly. The creature was exactly like the media footage had shown, except perhaps a tad taller than I expected. He was wearing a suit that looked like it was hand-tailored with cufflinks and a plain black tie with, with thin gray stripes. He tilted his blocky head towards me, saying nothing as he gestured towards the door as though expecting me to allow him inside. I figured that since I'd come this far, there's no reason to show cowardice now. The creature dipped his head and walked inside with a lurch before staring blankly at the old model television I had turned into scrap. Spread the broadcast, the creature said in a robotic voice. Then he lifted his hands up to take hold of his head. I watched in stunned silence as he removed the model from his neck. And underneath, there was nothing. Just a severed neck, and then... Then he passed the television he had been wearing to me, and... And he gestured for me to put it on. I hesitated, unsure what wearing this device would do to me, but I figured if it was what could free me from this madness, it was a small sacrifice, so I slid it on. I closed my eyes. And I waited. The world around me was dark. And then I saw numbers and faces. They blended together until, at last, they seemed indistinguishable. Maybe there had never been a difference at all. The headless creature in front of me gave a wicked thumbs up and then... and then seemed to fade into the ether. I knew now what I was meant to do. The, the methods we had been using before haven't been effective enough. So I logged on, and I share this message with you now. The signal is a part of you, and you'll share it, and you'll spread the broadcast. When you get your TV, and it will be soon, just remember, don't turn it off. Because, Mr. TV is watching. Hey there once again kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give you a big thank you for watching tonight's video. If you guys ever wanted to help support the show, you can always do so if you watch the show on youtube.com slash Pasta or find the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on iTunes, on Google Play, and on Spotify. And also, if you ever want to check out my wife's tea shop, it's etsy.com slash ivory monocle tea, where she sells hand-blended herbal teas in the theme of Dungeons and Dragons and Harry Potter and Final Fantasy and the like. You can find the link for it, as well as many, many, many other links in the description down below. And drum roll, please. A big, big, big thank you to everybody supporting me at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People such as... Tacia Lynn Ginobaga Arneo, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Chempinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Elyasin, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van Huss, Kai Albertson, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diane Kraus, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, <laughs> really? Did he kind of see Melissa Swagart, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Cross Rights, The Ginger Bros, Eliminator 86, Andrew Steinberg, Jason Sistma, Holy Realm, and Rafael Rodriguez. Thank you so much to you guys out there on Patreon, to all of you listening to either the podcast or the YouTube show. And that is everything, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and sweet dreams. <laughs>